else who might be out there watching this. Um, yeah, Dave, I finally got around to making the video. Um, our conversation from a couple of months ago when we were talking about parallelism and dividing heads and machine shop techniques, um, I finally got around to it. So, here you go. And anybody else who's here, welcome to. Anyway, parallelism. Um, this is very important in a crankshaft. Very, very important. Everything must be on the same plane. In this plane, they, the two, these two shafts need to be parallel. In this plane, they need to be absolutely parallel if possible. Also, the webs need to be at 90 degrees. These, by the way, are the webs. And, uh, those are, uh, well, you'll see here in a little while why those are important. That is the journal. Let's uh, get this terminology covered first, I guess. Um, but this part is a reject. Uh, it cannot be used because it's out of parallel. You probably can't see it here due to my crappy camera, but um, the parts aren't quite parallel. And uh, the first direction I showed you there, it's not too bad, but here, if you look at it here, where both parts should be parallel, in this direction, both should be exactly right. The journal is like this compared to the shaft, and that makes this a rejected part and uh, cannot be used, because that would just beat the bearings out in the engine. Uh, it's uh, also another thing this is an assembly and when I pushed this assembly onto the rod it did some terrible galling to the shaft if you can see that there's some deep deep scratches and this is kind of expensive stuff this is precision ground half inch uh, half inch stainless steel drill rod and uh, it won't be used but let's go down to the dungeon and I'll show you the dividing head and uh, maybe that'll clear a few things up as far as angles go well let's not do that yet <laughs> um, again let me cover the per terminology this is the crankshaft these are the webs and uh, this is the journal and that part in the middle there is going to be cut out when it's done but not yet. Here are some of the parts which we need to. Uh, this is the subassembly. These parts are. What I do is I assemble this first. Is there's just a short little piece of shaft that these fit onto. These are all reject parts, by the way. And uh, once that's assembled then I can put it onto the crankshaft. And uh, there's the assembly. I haven't pinned it together yet. Um, it's not necessary to have it pinned. This, by the way, is one of the parts I am going to use on my new crankshaft. So, that's, uh, that's what that looks like. Another thing that has to be made are the eccentrics. These are the eccentrics. You can see the stages and the, how these are made. This is all stainless steel. Everything you're going to see here that I'm making is made out of stainless steel. And you can also see how it's called an eccentric. It's uh, These are used first. Uh, yeah, you start out with a chunk like that. And then I machine it down to here. And then I drill the holes and ream the holes so they're fairly precisely round and uh, those are used to <coughs> they go on the crankshaft and those control the valves so I don't know if this is making it any clearer Dave but hopefully it is okay I think uh, now we can probably 
go down to the dungeon and I can show you the dividing head. <laughs> okay, here we are. This is my dividing head. This is uh, one I inherited. Um, it is a very, very handy tool um, for getting precise degrees. It, you can turn it to a certain number of degrees um, as a rotational part. You'll see how I do that here in a moment. Even fractions of degrees. So it's a uh, it's a valuable valuable thing. This crankshaft that I've got mounted in it now is my new one. It is not the reject that I was just showing you. This is a new one. And uh, you can see I've already gotten some work done on it. I've got two of the journals mounted. And there's the tailstock, which comes with the dividing head. All dividing heads should come with a tailstock. But I've got those two closest to the dividing head already mounted and pinned. And they are in the position they're going to be in forever. There's no way they are coming apart unless I were to intentionally drive them apart. Um, this uh, the, the operation of the engine will not affect them whatsoever. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking to make sure that we're at 90 degrees to the table. I know my table is flat and I know my square is right and I'm at exactly 90 degrees. Okay, so what I did to make sure, uh, to determine the, uh, around here I've got degrees marked, and also there's a series of holes around this plate, and there's a pin that will slip into those holes, and there are 24 of them, well, 360 divided by 80, excuse me, divided by 3 gives me 80. So 8 holes, every, eight ho every hole is 15 degrees from one another. So if I go 8 holes, then I should end up at exactly 120 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the pin out and I'm going to go exactly 8 holes from there and that should bring this one up to exactly 120 degrees. And here we'll continue to turn. You can count the holes if you wish, but uh, here we're getting close and I'll start to lock into the hole and there it is. Now let's check it with our square. Since this one's already mounted, That is exactly 120 degrees from this one. So I know that those two are correct. Exactly. Well, tell you the truth, we have a third one to mount. Since this is a three cylinder engine, we need three crank throws. And uh, there it is. And now all I have to do is to rotate it again another eight holes and that will put me at 120 degrees right so here we go we'll uh, turn around and oops I was shot let's back up and take the backlash out and there we go okay let's tilt this just a little bit toward us. If I tilt it a little bit toward me, I can give it a push. You can notice it's a snug fit. No push. And right there we are. Exactly 120, 120, 120. I know that. It's definite. 120 degrees from there. 120 
20 degrees from there. So, this is where I'm going to mount it. Now, to do that, oh, by the way, these are the eccentrics. Do not forget these if you're going to make something like this. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's another wasted part. And like I said, that drill rod's expensive. Don't want to waste it. Well, what I'm going to do first here is to get a rough, roughly get the distance correct. And then I'm going to take a really fine sharpie and go in there and mark that. And uh, that will get me close to where I need to be. Of course, I'm going to have to measure when I actually put the Loctite 648 on and slide that over and slide it back and then I have to do things very quickly because it sits up in about 10 seconds it's very fast and I check with the calipers I check with the square and uh, well you'll see okay I did all of that I pinned the uh, final throw to the crankshaft and I went ahead and just finished the crankshaft. I cut out the excess part of the shaft and uh, did a little bit of polishing on it, not much, and uh, there we have it. Also mounted the other eccentrics on the crankshaft as well so that you could see what the complete unit looks like. And uh, I'm quite happy with it. It, uh, it's a, a note that everything measures right. Um, I After I built it, I still had my mill mounted with the dividing head. I double checked everything. Um, by the way, the pins are taper pins and they have a very slight taper on them. They are also Loctited in though, but they um, they exert quite a bit of force in their holes and really makes for a solid, solid assembly. This will not come apart under normal engine engine usage. Even abnormal engine usage, I don't think this would come apart unless it were deliberately taken apart. The only way would be to heat it to about 500 degrees and then press those pins out. That's about the only way you break that lock Loctite bond. I've not tried with sub-zero temperatures but heat will certainly do it. So there it is. I hope this answers some of your questions Dave and uh, if I've uh, brought up any other questions for other people I'd certainly be happy to answer them. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make more of these videos. This is kind of really my first YouTube video. And uh, But if you do have questions, please leave them for me. I'd be happy to answer them. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, I'll certainly be glad to do that. Um, throw me out a like or two. and Well, I'll think about doing it. I could even do some machining videos though. There's so many machining videos out there I don't know if it would really be necessary. I mean lots of people know how to drill a hole in a piece of metal. So anyway I hope you all found this enjoyable and uh, please give me a comment and uh, we'll see what comes from it. I'll talk to you later Dave. See you all later.